guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I'm getting ready to do some preserving today. Yesterday I sent my husband over to the farmer stand and he brought me home four gallons of fresh strawberries. So I'm getting ready to preserve some strawberries here in the kitchen. So real quick I want to talk to you about some of the things that I use for preserving uh, my produce. So right now I'm getting ready to do um, some freezing. I'm going to freeze some sliced strawberries with sugar. That will be great for things like strawberry shortcake and other desserts in the future. Also great on ice cream by the way. And so one of the things that I use are these old-fashioned, been around forever freezer containers. These square containers are still my favorite containers to use. They come in a variety of different sizes and, oh by the way, made in the USA. These things are getting harder to find. It doesn't seem that people use them as much as maybe as they used to. Um, I used to find them at Walmart and other stores, but now the only place I have been able to find them are Tractor Supply. Um, I'm sure there's other stores that carry them, but I've just not been able to find them. Um, so that is what I use to freeze my produce inside. Now, jars. As you can see, I have a couple of them. Um, I've actually got more in my pantry as well. This is the time of year that you want to look for your jars because, first of all, this is when the stores really seem to stock up on them and often have really good sales on them. I bought all of these in the last couple of days and they were all on sale, uh, three or four dollars off each box. So that was a good deal. You can also go to thrift stores, consignment stores, yard sales. There's a lot of places that you can find jars and quite frankly, as long as they're in good condition, it doesn't matter what brand or how old they are, um, a jar is a jar in my book. I've gotten a lot of jars um, from yard sales and things like that. So now's the time to be looking for them, especially if you haven't started canning yet this year, or maybe you're gonna do it later in the summer as things start coming out of your garden. So stock up on the jars while you can. Some, some stores don't have them all year round, or if they do, it's very limited. So you wanna get them while the getting's good. Now, some of the other things that I use for canning, I just wanna show you a few of the tools that I have here. Now first of all, this isn't really a canning tool per se, but this thing right here, let me come show you. This is an egg slicer, but I use this for slicing my strawberries. It slices them perfectly. So this is a very handy little tool. Now onto the canning tools. First up, I have tongs. You want a good set of these tongs. These are for getting your hot jars in and out of the water without burning your fingers. As you see, I have two of these. Uh, this one, I believe, was a gift from my grandmother, and this one was part of a set. I have a, a, a several of these canning tools that are this blue color um, that came in a set. A ladle. This nice big sturdy ladle has a hook on the end so it's not going to fall down into the pot and it has a nice big cup for scooping a good quantity into your jars and then these funnels I actually have a couple of these and this one I just use for canning but I have another one an old uh, vintage antique one I use quite a bit and it's very handy for pouring my smoothies into my drinking jar without making a mess Okay, next I have this clamp and this is used for opening and closing jars without burning your fingers. Um, to be honest with you, I have only used this a couple of times. Um, it's just not a tool that I use frequently. So this little wand here, I know it's hard to see because it's clear, but this also came with the set. It is used for sliding down inside your jars to remove air bubbles. Now this handy little thing here is a lifesaver. It's a lifesaver for your fingers. This has a little magnet on the end and it is used for getting your hot lids out of the hot water. You just stick it down into the water and it picks up a lid. Isn't that handy? It also works on the rings as well. And then there is cheesecloth. Now cheesecloth is pretty important if you're making jellies or if you're making anything that you need to be able to squeeze the juice out of. Um, 
I have a hard time finding this. I don't know why places like Walmart don't put it in the canning section where they're selling all of this stuff because anybody who does a lot of canning is going to need cheesecloth. I have to look in the sewing department to get this even though it is, even though it's got strawberries here on the back of the package for making jelly. Um, oh, and then the rings. If you do a lot of canning, now when you finish with your jars and you mark them and you put them away, you take the rings off. Okay. So what do you do with all these rings? Because as you can see, every time you buy jars, you get more and more of them. Let me show you how I store mine. In my pantry, I have a hook that hangs way up on a shelf, way out of the way, and this is what I do. I take a piece of kitchen twine, put a loop on each end, and then I run it, I run all of the rings on that string, hook it together, and hang it on the hook. So I've got all my jar lids, all my rings, out of the way, but I can get them when I need them. And as you can see, I have the regular size, and I have the wide mouth size. That's what I do. And then let's talk about canners. This time of year, you want to go through, check all of the things that you use for canning, make sure it's all in good condition. Make sure the magnet hasn't fallen out of your wand. Make sure the wires in your strawberry cutter haven't snapped or anything like that. Maybe something's gone missing. Go through, do a little inventory, make sure you have everything, and then make sure everything's in good condition. Uh, when you pull out your canner, now I have two canners. This is my pressure canner. I've also got one of the classic uh, granny wear um, hot water bath canners that's still up in the cabinet. Now the hot water bath canner is just a great big pot, but the granny wear does have a tendency, I've noticed, to start pitting over time. So you want to go through, look at the pot, make sure there's no pinholes. Uh, make sure you don't have to replace your hot water bath pot. And that's really all you have to do for that. Now, your pressure cooker is a little bit different. First of all, you do want to go through, check it out, make sure there's no damage to your pressure cooker, uh, make sure everything's in good condition, make sure you have all of the parts. I have a little rocker that goes on mine, my valve is right here, it's in good condition, it's not broke, it's not cracked or anything, and then on the inside, Again, make sure everything is tight, make sure everything is in good working order, and especially check this, your gasket. So this thing right here, you need to pull this out, inspect it, look over it, make sure there's no damage, make sure there's no cracks. Um, over time, some of these gaskets will start to dry rot. If that's the case, you want to go ahead and get a new one so that you can replace it, because the last thing you need is a great big pot of hot green beans or something else that you're about to can and realize your gasket's bad. So go ahead and do that now. So another tool that I have that I don't have out here is a jar rack. I have a couple of the racks that actually go down inside the pots when you are canning. It makes it easy to get the jars in and out because you can just set all the jars down in at once and lift them all up at the same time. You want to look over that and make sure it's not damaged in any way as well. So that's about all I can think of. Um, if you have any questions about any of these particular items, leave them in the comments down below. And if you have any canning tips that you'd like to share, I'd love for you to share those as well. The guys are coming back from fishing. Wonder if they caught anything. So I'm busy here in the kitchen. Working on strawberries. Starting some baked beans in the instant pot. And I look in the living room. And what do I see? Dookie, what are you doing in my recliner? Dookie, what are you doing?